2019 has been such a great year for Sega Genesis and Mega Drive fans, hasn't it? Sure, we've seen tons of great options over the years for enjoying the system's most popular games, but I say that 2019 is the year that everyone, including Sega themselves, went all out. Thanks to consoles like the Mega SG from Analog and the Genesis Mini, wireless and wired controllers from 8-bit Do and RetroBit, and fantastic projects from the community like the Triple Bypass mod, it's easy to see why Sega appreciation and game prices are on the rise. The cherry on top comes from Spain-based developer Terra Onion, who spent the last couple of years developing what could be considered the ultimate Sega flash cart, the Mega SD. This device not only supports the requisite Genesis and Master System games, but at long last delivers something that myself and others have been clamoring for, Sega CD-ROM games. We've been able to take a look at the Mega SD thanks to a review unit sent to us by Terra Onion. So let's dive in and see what this thing can do. Okay, ignition on three. Ready? Three! The early 90s were an interesting time for the video game industry. Cartridges had long been the preferred media for consoles, and for good reason. Not only are they fast and efficient, but more importantly, they're extremely durable. But as games grew in size and complexity by leaps and bounds, it was clear that developers needed more legroom. When NEC released the CD-ROM add-on for the PC Engine in 1988, it was off to the races to see who would be next to utilize what seemed like at the time a limitless canvas of data storage at an exponentially lower manufacturing cost. Sega delivered their CD-ROM expansion in Japan in 1991 and throughout other regions over the course of the next two years. In Japan and Europe, this device was known as the Mega CD, while North America came to know it as the Sega CD. Connecting to an edge connector hidden inside an expansion slot on the Genesis, the Sega CD more than doubles the console's height. CDs are loaded into the system through a front-loading tray, which really drove home its premium feel. And let's face it, it just looks awesome. The added girth wasn't just for show either. Inside was a hodgepodge of additional tech for developers to play with, including hardware-based scaling and rotation, which was a staple of the Genesis's closest competitor, the Super Nintendo. This added hardware didn't come cheap, landing at nearly $300 in the US, although a number of pack-ins were included to help sweeten the pot. Granted, early games didn't seem to offer much that couldn't already be done on a cartridge. A number of hardware revisions, from lower cost redesigns to streamlined all-in-one consoles, followed over the Sega CD's lifespan. While the add-on sold fairly decently worldwide for the time, it's often grouped in with the 32X as a high-profile failure which tarnished Sega's reputation in the West. But the system's library ended up being fairly decent for those determined enough to wade past a glut of full-motion video games. Which, hey, a lot of those are pretty fun too. Whether it's due to the aging hardware or the deterioration of CDs themselves, the Sega CD is yet another example of the fragility of disc-based consoles. As such, a number of capable members of the retro gaming community have sought to merge the aging tech with modern hardware. Optical Disc Emulators, also known as ODEs, do away with the tiny moving parts of a disc drive and whisking the game data away from scratch-prone discs to the relative safety of solid-state media. We previously talked at length about the various ODEs for the Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1, but perhaps the most elaborate ODE came in the form of Terra Onion's Super SD System 3 for the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16. The SSDS3 connects to the back of the console, allowing the user to not only play Super CD-ROM games without the need for original hardware or expansion cards, but also Hue card ROMs as well. All to say nothing about how it's also a plug-and-play RGB video output solution. While the SSDS3 did struggle with various challenges at its inception, mostly surrounding its video output capabilities, it's in a pretty great spot now. Thanks to input from the community, talented modders, and electrical engineers, a number of firmware and hardware fixes have helped to optimize the device. Naturally, the big question was, what would Terra Onion do as a follow-up? Most, including myself, were hoping for a Sega CD-focused device. The biggest hurdle that has prevented such a device from becoming reality is that the Sega CD is so much more complex than the PC Engine CD system, which isn't much more than a CD drive. The Sega CD is a system unto itself, 
with many discrete chips that enhance the power of the Sega Genesis. In the summer of 2019, Terra Onion announced that they had overcome these challenges by unveiling the Mega SD, an ODE for the Sega CD, and so much more. It's available for about 260 US dollars via TerraOnion.com. I'd always imagined that a Sega CD replacement would attach to the edge connector the same way that a real Sega CD would. When the MSD was revealed as an oversized cartridge, I was pleasantly surprised that this much more appealing form factor was even possible. Housed in the same type of smoky, translucent plastic that the SSDS3 came in, the size and shape is virtually indistinguishable from a virtual racing cartridge. On the side, you have a micro SD card slot and a singular physical button. Inside is a blue PCB populated with a number of chips, a green access LED, and a Spartan-based FPGA. The cartridge edge is subtly chamfered to prevent wear and tear on the system's slot, while drawing the correct voltage. In fact, the whole device draws less power than a real Virtua Racing cart. Which really leads me to think, to classify the MSD, or heck, even the SSDS3 as an ODE, is a bit inaccurate. A typical ODE replaces the drive functionality alone, while the rest of the hardware remains the same. This is total hardware emulation via the FPGA. So think of it like this. The Mega SD is as much a Sega CD as the Super NT is a Super NES, or the Mega SG is a Sega Genesis. Supporting FAT32 or XFAT formatted micro SD cards up to 400 gigs, you should have more than enough space for anything you would want to play from region to region. The Mega SD will work on most hardware variants. The original Model 1 and Model 2 Genesis will be the go-tos for those who choose original hardware. The Genesis 3 and the portable Nomad will also work, but both will take different mods to get the fully desired functionality, such as CD audio. But it's still crazy seeing Sega CD games running on a Nomad screen, isn't it? What about system-on-a-chip style clone consoles? Well, I just had the Gamers Tech Mini Gen on hand to test, and color me surprised, it works. It's composite only, and CD audio doesn't work either. Not sure if a mod would fix that, or if anyone cares enough to figure it out. But it's the one-two punch combo of the analog Mega SG and Mega SD that may just provide the ultimate road to 16-bit heaven. Just remember to tick the Enable Cartridge and CD Audio box, while unchecking Automatically Enable CD Audio in the SG's options if you want to get the most out of it. As usual, I'll be showing a bunch of material captured from different consoles and revisions throughout the entire episode. So keep in mind that as the device gets into more people's hands, I'm sure lots of quirks will pop up. Thankfully, up until now, Terra Onion has been pretty good at stamping out glitches or incompatibilities at the firmware level. Speaking of firmware, the MSD does keep these updates locked behind a user account on the Terra Onion website, which requires you to register your device's serial number. This number can be found on the back of the cartridge itself, or via the option menu in the front end user interface. The firmware download generated seems to be tailored to only install on a unit with a matching serial number. Yeah. The main menu is pretty self-explanatory. You scroll up and down to navigate the various directories you previously set up on the SD card via your computer. If you're using a Mega SG, be sure to set the reset mode to hard in the SD's options, which ensures higher compatibility with games working by causing a hard console reset when you choose a game to play. In general, it's probably best to just leave it set this way. Whether it's pulling game ROMs from your own carts using devices like the Retroad, or ripping disk images from your CD games using a computer program like ImageBurn, you'll have to put in a little bit of legwork to get everything just the way you like it. If you decide to skew towards grabbing the games from elsewhere, well, that's up to you to figure out. While Sega CD support is probably the main reason people would be interested in the MSD in the first place, it's easy to forget that it can play all kinds of other games too. Yeah, it might be hard to get excited about Genesis and Mega Drive game support in a world where Crix's Mega EverDrive has been a thing for years, but the all-in-one functionality is a big part of the appeal here. Predictably, Genesis games seem to run exactly as you'd expect. Once you start a game, you can bring up an in-game menu by pressing up and start on the controller. This menu has several functions specific to running regular Genesis games. While cheat codes and save states are standard fare for higher tier flashcards, fans of the latter will be pleasantly surprised by a whopping 8, yes, 8 
individual save slots per game. I know this sounds extreme, but I love the idea of keeping a set of save states that would allow me to quickly jump back to later levels. Save state files are stored on the SD card within the state folder and have a matching file name to the ROM so they can be easily shared. Generating or loading a save state can cause some odd behavior with the Genesis sound hardware, like weird sounds or just music not playing at all. Thankfully, it tends to correct itself when something happens that would cause the music to start over, like dying or pausing and unpausing. Of special note is the support for Virtua Racing. The original cartridge uses a specially integrated chip, making the Mega SD, to my knowledge, the very first Genesis flash cart capable of playing it. Some unlicensed games with enormous ROM sizes also worked, like Pure Solar. However, make note that the in-game menu cannot be accessed while playing some of these special case games. Master System cartridge and card games are both supported via the Genesis's Master System mode. Well, except for F-15 Fighting Falcon, which originally used a specific graphical mode not carried over to the Genesis hardware. SMS games use the button located on the side of the Mega SD to pause and unpause the game, similar to a real system. Unfortunately, with Master System mode, there is no in-game menu and consequently, save states are not possible. As far as I know, the only flash card that supports save states for SMS games is Crix's Master Everdrive X7. This mode does offer optional emulation of the Master System's Yamaha YM2413FM expansion audio, which can be toggled on and off in the main option menu. Finally, 32X ROMs are supported if you have a 32X unit attached to your console. I understand that this might seem like a bummer for some, but it simply comes down to the way that the Genesis and 32X interact with each other. We just gotta accept that it's not viable right now. That'll play. And that having it would require at least a bigger and more expensive FPGA. Having a 32X attached does come with a slew of considerations though. In short, you lose the ability for any sort of in-game menu even for regular Genesis games, which means no save states. You also won't be able to boot Master System or Sega CD games. In a nice effort to quell confusion, incompatible games won't even show up in the main menu at all when you have a 32X attached. Finish him. Johnny Cage wins. All variants of save file types are supported, from the SRAM used by most games, to the EEPROM used in certain games like Wonder Boy and Monster World. With the most recent firmware update, save files are simply drag and drop from EverDrives or real cartridges via a retrode. Gently place the .SRM file into the BUP folder and match the file name to the game ROM. By the way, if this is a subject you'd like to learn more about, check out our episode on cartridge save file preservation. Of course, this is all good stuff, but it's the much-touted Sega CD support that most of you are here for, right? If you're a fan of the system like I am, then the ability to play these games off of solid-state media tips the scales and makes the Mega SD an essential and unique flash cartridge. CD-ROM game images need to be ripped as a .bin, .img, or .iso and are required to have a .q file. Sorting each combo of disk image and Q file into their own folder gives us what we see as a standalone game in the Mega SD's menu interface. Multi-game discs need to have all files in the same folder and labeled in a way that they appear in the correct order. Disc 1, Disc 2, you know what I mean. CD games do have the particular caveat of requiring a BIOS file, which can be a bit of a prickly subject because they are still under copyright. However you decide to obtain these files is completely up to you. You'll need to load them into the options of the main menu one for each supported region. One important thing to keep in mind is that the Sega CD functionality on the Mega SD will not work at all if you have a real Sega CD connected to your console because it causes some sort of bus conflict. And so, this means no Sega CD game loadings on the all-in-one systems, such as the CDX or Wonder Mega. 
As you may have already guessed, this also means that the handful of 32X CD games aren't supported either. Games are auto-detected by region via the header of the disk image, and will boot up the correct BIOS file. You can even play the Redbook audio from here as if you had the disk inserted, or manage your backup RAM and save files. Once the game actually loads, you'll be greeted with that all-too-familiar jingle. Most CD-ROM consoles, up to the PlayStation, used built-in RAM to store save games, with extra storage available on expansions like RAM cards. So, how does the Mega SD deal with this hurdle? Matching what a real system would do, the Mega SD has the option to generate a single pool of internal memory and accompanying RAM card which will be automatically loaded when you play a CD game. This file is stored on the SD card and consists of an equal amount of internal space as a real Sega CD while the RAM cart storage is a bit smaller than what you'd get using an official RAM cart. If you want to function within these confines and juggle files back and forth, hey, you can do that. But really, who wants to jump through those hoops when you can have unlimited space? Enabling the per game backup RAM option creates an internal and RAM cart pool per disk image, meaning that the chances of you running out of space are very, very slim. Like cartridge games, CD backup RAM files have a .srm file extension and are stored within the BUP folder for maximum convenience and easy file transfer. The in-game menu does work with Sega CD games, which is pretty convenient. Although there are understandably no save states, you can reboot the game or jump back to the Mega SD menu from here. This is also how disk changes are normally handled with multi-disc games. Alternatively, if you long for the time-honored tradition of getting up off the couch and swapping the disks, Pressing the button on the Mega SD will achieve the same results. You're ball, Junior! For fun, I tried swapping discs during the opening FMV of Night Trap, causing it to play random scenes from disc 2 and generally just glitching out. You know, the guy really scares me. Ashley, can I trust you? Yeah. I thought it was cool that the game behaved the same way as it would if you did the same thing on a Sega CD Model 2 which I think is a testament to how accurate the Sega CD hardware emulation is on the Mega SD. Thankfully, we don't have to think twice about video quality output with the Mega SD but we do have to consider an important part of the CD gaming experience, audio. Terra Onion has enlisted the help of Firebrand X, who has developed a number of audio-centric mods for the Genesis, to design an amp circuit to drive analog audio into the Genesis circuitry. As a result, there's quite a few options that address the sound in particular. You can set the default CDDA, and PCM audio levels back in the main menu options. CDDA stands for Compact Disc Digital Audio, referring to the audio on disc. PCM audio comes from the additional sound chip in the hardware itself and is used for both sound effects and some music tracks. These audio levels can be tweaked separately, but the default 80% value mimics the level of real hardware. Going beyond that amount might cause audio distortion in some games. These levels can also be temporarily altered via the in-game menu, which is pretty handy for games where the audio balance just doesn't sound right. In addition, the CDDA treble boost and PCM low pass filter options available in the main menu can be ticked to bring the overall sound closer to the original hardware combination. <laughs> While you might not think that it would be tricky to emulate the characteristics of CD audio, it did take the team some work to match the sound signature. The most recent firmware combines Firebrand X's attention to detail with the help of MD Fourier 
to get the audio as close as possible to original hardware. In this case, a VA3 Model 1 Genesis and a Model 1 Sega CD. MD Fourier is an ongoing open source project dedicated to analyzing original Genesis and Mega Drive audio for preservation and to assist in producing accurate emulation. One final note on the Mega SD's sound capabilities. We were told that there may be a slight buzzing while the SD card is being accessed and can be heard during moments of complete silence. Terra Onion even delayed the announcement of the Mega SD for several months while they worked with electrical engineers to reduce this as much as possible. I'd say it was well worth the effort because I have to crank the volume by at least 40 decibels to bring it out in my captures. But you know, if you can pick it out with your ears, then consider me impressed. You've got much better hearing than I do. When CD-ROM games were first arriving on the market, one mark you'd always see levied against the medium is load times. For the most part, I'd say that Sega CD games aren't too horrible in this area overall or maybe I'm just used to it by now. But one major benefit that anyone would expect out of the Mega SD is the ability to speed up load times. And speed them up, it does. In some cases though, audio and video are timed by the developer in such a way to keep everything in sync. Speeding up load times might cause them to fall out of sync. Hey, at least I'm not the one who's whining about being away from Earth so long. Yeah, well at least I've got a girlfriend waiting for me back on Earth. What about you? Hey. The radar reports multiple unidentified objects heading our way. Uh-oh. This doesn't look good. Oh, no! In which case, the emulate seek time option comes in handy. This will slow everything down to mimic the real read speed of the original hardware. The firmware actually keeps track of the games that need this applied. So you can just leave the toggle off all the time, and the system will slow it down when it's needed. You were totally hot. Radicals, dude! Radicals! <laughs> For the most part, I say that the improvements are fairly minor. A second here, two seconds there. But in some games, such as Willy Beamish... Hi, my name's Willy Beamish. ...which has excruciatingly long load times to do anything. Well, it's significantly better. Willy Beamish? What did I just say? Oh no, the old boom caught me. Better think of something fast. It doesn't make the game all that more playable, but I guess fans will be happy. Oh no, the old boom caught me. Better think of something fast. One of the more interesting experimental features is the scaling speed up option, which speeds up the Sega CD's VDP for smoother scaling, in certain instances. Although it's recommended to leave this off most of the time, it might be fun to see how it affects certain games. Now that you know what this thing is capable of doing, let's relax and have some fun. What are some things you should check out if you pick up a Mega SD? The Sega CD may not have a vast library, but it does have some notable games that I feel are absolutely essential. Not only that, but we can't forget what might just be the ultimate use of the Mega SD. Mega Drive Plus. Did you know that a game could be programmed in such a way to use both the Genesis and Sega CD hardware in tandem? The game itself plays off the cartridge, while the Sega CD could be used for music tracks. It's a mystery why Sega never took advantage of this ability, much less publicized it. How cool would this have been back in the 90s? As far as I know, Watermelon's Pure Solar and The Great Architects was the first game to utilize this hidden capability. Terra Onion knew this sort of functionality would be heavily desired. Super NES fans have been enjoying CD audio hacks of cartridge games using the SD to SNES flash cart and its MSU1 chip for some time now. Well, Terra Onion delivers the goods with what they call Mega Drive Plus games. It's about time that Sega fans can get in on this kind of action. But the downside is there's just not a lot of them yet. The first one I played was OutRun, which mixes the arcade music with the Genesis game. It's alright, I guess. I don't love this version of the game in the first place, and the audio is kind of quiet.
there's certainly ample room for improvement here, but the other Mega Drive Plus release thus far is virtually perfect. And it's one of the first games that I'm sure came to mind when you first heard of this feature, Streets of Rage 2. Man, this is awesome. The music is balanced perfectly, and the music tracks sound like something that would have existed if Sega had done this themselves. And you know what? They should have. I gotta tell you, there's so many Mega Drive Plus games that I'd like to see in the future. I'm just spitballing here, but could you imagine a Michael Jackson's Moonwalker with the real MJ tunes? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm kind of excited about this kind of stuff. The Sega CD was my first exposure to the divisive working designs, who were responsible for localizing some choice RPGs in a time when they weren't all that popular in the West. I never dreamed we'd say goodbye like this. The world beyond these shores is such a dangerous place. Other than their now sometimes dated translations, one of the big things that makes working designs so contentious is their knack for altering aspects below the surface. Increasing difficulty, having restrictions placed on saving your game, and more. If these sorts of things rub you the wrong way, I recommend checking out the Unworked Designs hacks, which undoes a lot of the tinkering while keeping the original translation. Once the disc image has been patched, these are absolutely playable on the Mega SD. I went more in depth on these in our useful ROM hacks episode, so if you want some specifics of what was altered, check that out. Back in 2015, a programmer named Brian Van Buren did a lot of legwork when it comes to decoding Sega CD save RAM files. He compiled the various utilities that he developed in an archive called SCD Tools. An offshoot of this project was Backup Shell an interface that can be run on a real Sega CD and allows you to copy pre-selected save files to the internal or cartridge memory. You can also tamper with the hex data of the save files to help give you more money, increase your hit points, and other kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. Once you copy the save files, just rename the associated backupshell.srm file in the BUP folder to match whatever game you want to use those saves with. Although it seems like much of this work was unfortunately underappreciated, Brian Van Buren, if you somehow see this, thanks for making SCD tools. So what about just general games worth checking out? Everyone already knows about the expensive ones. Heck, they probably bought the Mega SD to be able to play them. You know, games like KO Flying Squadron, Shining Force CD, And of course, Snatcher. So, Little John's memory might provide us with an important lead. That's right. But do yourself a favor and beeline for Road Avenger, which is perhaps the greatest FMV game ever made, and is such an over the top roller coaster that it tends to leave a strong impression on anyone who plays it. It also has the best opening theme of all time. Well, at least in my opinion. And if you like that, check out the Gaming Muso's cover of it here on YouTube. He totally does it justice. Then there's Star Strike, an FMV rail shooter that was originally canceled and then later released by Good Deal Games in 2001. They made something like five copies of it. And it is hilarious. This is our new rookie pilot, Trace. Hi, I'm Cosmo. Get ready for the ride of your life, kid. 
Yeah, and if you live through the first mission, you can call me Snoopy. This, this right here, is exactly the kind of stuff that I play FMV games for. It's so stupid. I love it. I've got lock. <laughs> As a lifelong Sega fan, how cool is it to finally see this lavish attention put on the Genesis? I, for one, could never have imagined when I was 13 that I'd be playing a CD game off a cartridge. So what do you think? While I feel that the Mega SD easily takes the crown of essential flash cart for the Sega Genesis, others might feel that its price is a bit too hefty versus the alternatives. A real Sega CD can play burned discs without modding the system, which might be plenty for some, but that does require you to have the original hardware already. Or heck. Maybe you don't even care about the system at all. In which case, I get it. I don't agree, but I get it. But the potential for future Mega Drive Plus games brings everything home, at long last giving the Genesis an ST to SNES equivalent that has been long overdue. We may never see a year full of loving innovation directed towards the Genesis ever again. But that's okay. I can't think of anything else that I'd want. Breaking contact. 